So today on our beginner series for uh, working with Final Cut Pro X version 10.3 we're going to have a, just a, a little look at transitions so how you get from one clip to another. So I'm just going to scroll across to Final Cut Pro here. Um, so yeah, how you move from one clip to another um, has a lot of uh, different sort of narrative um, properties. It depends on um, the sort of timing and pace that you want the piece to have, if you want it to kind of feel quite abrupt, if you want it to feel quite organic. They're all going to have a, a different... Um, how you move from one clip to another will have an impact on the, the pace and the tone of the video you're creating. So for now, I'm just going to show you the sort of the practical tools as opposed to going too much into the the, the, uh, the technicalities, uh, sorry, into the um, conceptual um, content. So the first thing I want you to draw your attention to is just to have a note of what is these, these ones here. So these ones here are just, I think it's just called a jump cut. So it's just going to literally jump from one to another. As I hit the space bar, you'll see this is both video and sound. It's just going to cut just quite abruptly from one to another without too much of a, <laughs> too, uh, it's, not, it's not very smooth. Um, although that being said, you can kind of, it can be smooth depending on how you choose your timing. So if, if it's um, timed with, with a movement or with um, a piece of, uh, piece of music, um, straight jump cuts can be very, can appear very smooth. So um, it just depends on how you, how you choose to put those together. Um, within your jump cut then, I'm just gonna have a little, I'm gonna take my playhead here to the, well actually I don't need the playhead, it just needs to be the mouse. So I'm gonna have a look at this point where two clips meet. And we're gonna open up something called the precision editor. And you access this quite simply by double clicking at this point where there's a join between two clips. And you double click on that point. And from there it opens up our precision editor. And this here is, uh, it's where you can see in a lot of detail um, how the clip's coming in, how it's changing from one to another, and also how much of your of your remaining clip, which is up here, is remaining to you. So we can watch this. This is this here is our clip. If I double click, you can see this is the clip that comes in, cuts at this point. This is the point where this clip comes in, and it continues on. But you can see this in more detail, what comes after it and what comes before it. So here, this is the point where the clip cuts. It cuts from this clip into this clip and continues on. But you can see you, you, this is the, re the remaining clip that would be available to you should you choose to adjust into it or use a transition. And then at the bottom here, this is all the clip that's available beforehand. So you can actually make an adjustment to where the start point or the end point of this transition is by clip grabbing and dragging this. And you can see the exact point. So this one here, we've seen this girl's kind of waving. So I'd say that's where I want to be. Or I might not want to include the wave. Not the wave, I just want the walk. Just to here, that's where I want it to finish. So I want it to come into the walk, and then it's going to come into this point. It's kind of blurry. Maybe I don't want the blur. Maybe I want it to be where he starts kind of coming into focus. So I might pull this further in. So let's just watch that. You can play this while the transition, while the precision editor is open. So it's still a jump cut. I said actually that's quite short. So double clicking this to close our precision editor. Can I bring more of the beginning in? might even be too long now. So I'll bring that one in there. I might change the order so I want this clip to happen here. Um, so that's that's a straightforward kind of jump cut and also how we how we access our precision editor. So the next thing I'm going to show you then is how to apply one of these lovely uh, transitions that we have here at the right hand side and how that then changes within the precision editor. So if I click on transitions so there's loads and loads of different kinds. On the whole, you know, if you want something to look kind of quite clean and crisp, there's a, there's a few nice ones to recommend. Things like your cross dissolve is one of the, the classics kind of standards. Um, even things like directional, which are kind of sideways blur. Um, fade to colors is a fade to black or to fade to another color. If you have a, another color, um, you can make adjustments to that too. Sort of flash is just a kind of blast of, of white. Um, which can be useful for these kind of things where you have that happening naturally as part of the lighting scenario. Gaussian is just a nice kind of Gaussian blur in and out. Gradient again, it's just, just the gradient. Some of the light flares can be okay if they're not used kind of too, <laughs> they're a little bit cheesy. Like noise flash is a little bit of a better one. Um, simple, simple is a lovely one. So I'm going to go back up just anyway to our, our cross dissolve just so you can see how this works. So I'm going to just literally just drag the cross is off and drop it at the point where those two clips meet. So we have these two, um, it has to be on that point otherwise we can't drop it into the middle of a clip because you can't 
that you can transition from one from the same clip into itself, but you need to, to blade uh, to place a cut in the middle of that. Um, so I'm just going to hit spacebar now so you can kind of see the difference. So now that's more of a blade, and it, it sorry, that's more of a blend. And what that also does is it not only transitions the visuals, but also transitions the sound. So the sound is a little smoother. So if I just play that again. So it's less of a harsh cut. If I take that off and play it before, it just it's a it's an abrupt one, and this is quite smooth. Now, in the same way that you can adjust the clips to increase the length, you can do this in exactly the same way by just dragging and pulling the clip out. So I'm going to make that longer. Now, the longer the transition is, the more time it takes to pull from one clip to another. So generally, the smoother it is. So if I just do that one there. So it's a kind of smooth, gentle transition which can occur there. So you can choose the, the, the speed of the transition can um, again be indicative of the tone of your piece, the sort of tempo of your piece, if it's a fast moving kind of action type scenario, maybe you want it to be um, more dynamic, maybe you want the cuts to be faster, if it's a kind of more of a smooth kind of mood piece, it's quite soft, maybe you want the transition to happen, or sometimes even a transition between different periods of time, you want to give the impression that a long period of time has passed, you can use sort of a long, slightly longer transitions for those types of reasons. It's good to indicate a change of space, change of timing, change of tone, change of character, those kind of things. Um, so let's just take another transition just to kind of see how that starts doing. So our fade to black is again sort of one of our sort of classic that is used in every single promotional video you will almost ever see. Out to black, back in, again, change of time, change of tone, change of place. Some of them are a little, a little cheesy, but if you're making a cheesy video, if, 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 if again, it's more about sort of choosing um, any of these technical tools and devices which reflect the tone of what you're trying to create. If, you're cre if your video is about a, an 80s themed party, then you, you might want absolutely your, your lead character to emerge from a star. Um, <laughs> but if you're making something that's kind of a sleek kind of promotional video for I don't know, a business, you maybe you wouldn't want to have it kind of rotating arrows, for example. So some of them can be kind of quite fun, some of them can be a bit mental, but uh, make your creative choice. <laughs> give you the tools, the vision is yours. Uh, this circle, some of these mad colour planes. Yeah. So you've got all these kind of options available to you. So I'm just going to go back up to the, to the cross dissolve and pop this here. And I'm going to drag it out a little. And I'm going to open up the precision editor again, and this is accessed by double clicking on this portion here. We have these two arrows which echo, yeah, it's kind of it looks like a sort of screw and kind of symbol here. Double clicking on this portion here opens up our precision editor again, and now you can see it looks a little different. So rather than it just being one straight line down between a cut in and out to another, you can now see this is the part of this is the frame of the clip where the transition begins to occur, and it's an opacity adjustment. It's sort of like turning it like more see through basically. Um, so this one's fading out and you can see the point where that clip is, has fully faded out. Similarly with this clip you can see the point where it starts to fade in and the point where it is now completely in. So it's so this is kind of like where the full clip um, starts where the full clip ends. And that additional clip is, is necessary. So you might find when you add a transition maybe a moment of the clip that you didn't want to see now starts appearing because it's now kind of further along and you didn't want that wave even in the transition. So you can use this part to pull sort of in or out where you want that to happen. And you can kind of start to see. I need more of my DJ clip now because there's not very much there. So if I play that now, and you can observe that transition happening. Now you might find as well, in order for that transition to take place, you need this additional clip available to you. So if I decide that I want to pull this all the way over here, you can realize that actually there's no more clip to transition into. So if I want to increase the length of my transition, it's going to reach a point where I can't because it Final Cut Pro is telling you there's no more clip available. So it's just something to be aware of. If you're trying to adjust the length of your transition and it won't, there's a good chance, like this red line is indicating, that you've run out of clip. In which case you need to find like, a different choice, maybe pull it in to give it more space if you want your transition to be longer. It's just kind of something to, to make note of. So I don't need it to be quite that massive. But we're going to pull that in. So we've got a nice kind of crossfade. Let's just put in here. I transition into this clip. Here. Okay, so another type of transition I'm going to show you is called it's called a J or L cut. 
and it's used um, by the um, the visuals and the sound cutting at different times. So this is done by opening up our um, our sound. It's like a precision editor for our sound, basically. So I'm going to go back up to here. This is from a previous video. Clicking on these two uh, film clips, and I'm going to choose this one that kind of indicates a little bit more sound, so we can see. So we have a slight visual reference. We know what video we're talking to. We can see more of our sound. I'm going to click that, and I'm also going to close the transition so we can see. So what it means, it can it can be used basically to have maybe sound from one clip continuing into another, or sort of finishing earlier, those types of things. So I'm going to take this clip and I'm going to double click on the sound waves themselves. Double click, opens up this. So it hasn't disconnected the audio, that's a different function. You can actually take the audio and take it away. It is still attached to the clip. If I do it to another clip, you'll see that it, the audio still comes with the clip but it means you can make independent adjustments to when the audio starts and when the video starts, but they remain synced. So they're not out of sync with each other. Just double click just to close it. So from here I've decided I want the audio from this to continue on into these clips because I want it to be, I want that almost maybe even to create a little bit of the soundtrack or I want it to be a bit smoother from one into another. This is where you can have a sort of jump cut visually with a softer audio transition. So I'm going to take this audio and I'm going to pull it and I'm going to drag it out, oh, just the audio, and I'm going to pull it here. So this audio is now going to continue, because it can't go too far because I've not got that much audio left to me, but I'm going to pull it out so it kind of transitions a little bit further. Now if you listen to that, this audio is going to play simultaneously and so is this. So let's just hear how that sounds. It's going to sound a bit strange, which is not what I want. So I don't want this audio at all. So I'm going to hover over this bar here and I'm going to bring that down. That's my volume adjuster. We're going to go into sound in another video there as well. And with this one, this, these little beads that we have here, that's going to be a fade in and a fade out for our audio. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag that in. So this is going to fade in. Let's bring that back in a little bit. And I'm going to have this one as a fade out. So this audio is going to fade out as this audio fades in. And at the same time, this audio is going to continue on under two clips. So let's just watch how that occurs. And now we're into the next clip. It might not even be as long as that. You might choose to pull this out if you have if you have lots of um, clip available to you. That might provide the backtrack for an entire video, or it might just literally be a slightly smoother transition from one clip into another, so that it doesn't feel quite as harsh. Yeah. So that's what's known as a J cut or an L cut. It's known that because if you have it here, yeah, it just goes from here to here. So it's across. Double clicking on this clip. It will now bring it back in again. It looks like the transition happens here, but it still happens at exactly the same place. Oh, that's me. I pull the ring in. Pull that out. Double click. So it's still occurring. It still happens, but it's kind of hidden, so you don't see it. You would see it if I was to bring it the other way. So let me pull this in and bring it right in. So it actually stops before the clip does. It's a bit of a wheel, but it might be something you want to do again for creative purpose, maybe this needs to be in silence for some dramatic reason. So let's go forward and see how that sounds. And you can kind of see it fade out. And then go in. Similarly, this one, you might decide you want the sound from this one to begin coming in actually before you see her. So maybe you want this to happen first, which might make a little bit more sense. Let's try that. you get that nice kind of smooth audio and sometimes having the audio kind of like um, cut at a slightly different point from the from the visuals it can also add to that idea of, of a slightly kind of smoother more organic feel despite the fact that the visuals are, are um, being cut quite uh, quite abruptly from one shot to another from one scene to another so those are our basic transitions so you've got your straight jump cut one clip to another you can apply some of the um, the generated um, installed transitions, there's a huge array to choose from and to play with. Um, you've got the JRL cuts where you work with your sound independently and you've also got your precision editor where you can work really specifically on all of these different types of adjustments. So that's our transitions for today, thank you very much for listening.